Um, so my name is Gabriel, I'm from the city of Kenning. I'm going to talk to you about rubbish maps and the QGIS Atlas. Um, so as you probably figured out, I'm not talking about really awful maps. <laughs> so it's really um, maps for people that drive these, right? Um, they need to know where they're going so they can pick up your bins. A little bit about me and my talk before I get stuck in the details. Um, I have a background in urban planning. I've been an urban planner for about 15 odd years. I started using QGIS in 2016 or thereabouts, and I've been using it at City of Canning ever since. For most of this year, I've been seconded into the city spatial team uh, doing various projects, one of which is working on this Rubbish Rounds data set. Uh, I'm mostly going to reference the Rubbish Rounds data, but it does relate to Recycling Rounds data. They're two separate data sets, but they're fairly similar, so if I use the terms interchangeably, they're pretty all the same. These maps, this is kind of what the, the old maps look like. Um, they'll have a day and a round. Uh, a round being that is one driver's day's work, okay? And they'll drive out. And they have a load one and load two because rubbish trucks are not magical machines. They do get full and they need to go and empty their rubbish. So they'll, they'll go out, they'll do load one, empty, then they'll come out and do load two, all right? And the idea is you want to try and have both loads on the same map as much as you can. Sometimes not possible, but you try. Where did all this work start from? Well, once upon a time, we had a service desk request a few months ago, actually. And basically, our waste services wanted um, school zones on these maps because apparently parents don't like rubbish trucks around when they're picking up their kids. <laughs> um, so they wanted that put on the maps, and they also wanted um, some of the boundaries of some of these rubbish rounds updated. And I thought, hey, that sounds pretty easy. Yeah, I'll, I'll get stuck straight into that. But there'd be dragons in the land. And uh, I was warned by the, the leader of our GIS team that, you know, the data was mm, not so great. And the atlas was a bit messy last time. So take some time and see if you can do better with it. And I thought, ah, challenge accepted. So the first problem I ran into was um, geometry errors and a whole lot of them. Um, this is an old data set. I think it goes back to like a CAD data set and then it got converted to tab and then got converted to shape files and yeah, they're not good. The next problem was some of the strata properties on the boundaries of some of these uh, rubbish rounds. So you look at this site here, it's got four properties, two facing onto this road, two facing onto that road. They all show up in the same rubbish round. These two actually shouldn't be. Now, the problem with that is if someone goes on our website and searches for some of this data and goes, when does my rubbish get picked up, they're going to get the wrong data. Not great. Uh, the other issue was the sort of spatial layout of some of these. Um, I did not make these up, so please don't, don't crucify me. But this is one whole round, right? And yeah, you can make a map like that. Not very useful for a driver who's trying to figure out where they need to go. So we need to be able to... to break all these, these zones and then rounds up. Okay, so at this point I had to sort of figure out, well, what was I going to do? Was I going to try and fix the old data or was I just going to blow it away and start from scratch? And being enthusiastic, I decided to rebuild from scratch. Um, <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to fix these geometry errors because I don't like them. And I'm going to restructure the data to make sure I really get the QGIS Atlas working nicely. And I'm going to fix the boundary issues, which is all great. Issue two was the uh, boundaries of these um, uh, strata properties. So what we are going to do is we're going to create a whole new layer to digitize these individual built strata lots and then use them to query which, which property, like which one of these are going to be in which rubbish round, right? Um, and we would use that then to, to, for the querying for our website and mapping system. And it looks something like this, right? So you can see the, the strata lot numbers down there, the one, two, and three, four. And then they've got the strata plan number, the address, and so on. And how do we do this? Well, we, you, you get the strata plan. It looks something like this, if you haven't seen one. Uh, and they've got their lengths and, um, and angles on, the, on these plans, for the most part. And you try and... Uh, digitize as accurately as you can, basically, because maybe one day someone else will use this data. So, right, and the way we do this is the QGIS advanced digitizing tools. If you've never used them, 
They are available. They let you do um, uh, digitizing with angles and distances. There was some difficulties with some of these uh, strata plans because, well, some of them didn't have all the lengths and angles that you actually need, which was fun. All right, so the next issue was the spatial layout. Um, so I was determined that I was going to use the QGIS Atlas for all of these maps, or so I thought. I'll make more on that later. And I wanted to set up the, the data to really drive the atlas, and I was pretty certain that I was going to use the data-defined overrides for just about everything, so I got stuck into it. So I created the rubbish rounds polygons uh, by street block, and you, know, you can see the information, the day, the round, the load, um, and then this would later be merged into a multi-part polygon, which is sort of preferred by, um, I think we've got an app that sort of queries some of this stuff, and there's some KML exports we do. Then what I decided to do was actually create a polygon type field. Um, now, the reason I did this was I quickly realized that I'm going to have to generate not just the rubbish rounds data, but I was also going to have to generate atlas polygons, which are not going to necessarily match up with the rubbish rounds data, right? I'm going to have to break up some of these things to make multiple maps, and you'll see that a bit later. I guess the question here was, well, how do you know how to generate the atlas polygons, right? They don't always match up with... Um, the round that, that you're looking at. So I created an atlas reference field, um, and this would generate the um, atlas polygons. And you can see it's fairly verbose, right? Tuesday, round seven, map two of two, right? And you'll see that there's a load one and load two in that same atlas polygon, right? Uh, so this would let me sort of split things up nicely for, for the atlas. Then we needed to figure out, well, some of the maps are going to be better in portrait as opposed to landscape. So I created an atlas map orientation field in the data um, and specified whether it's going to be a landscape or a portrait map. And I would filter that in the QGIS atlas. I then added a scale field because sometimes, you know, the drivers want these maps to be as big as possible uh, so they can see everything in detail. And sometimes when you're using the atlas, it's nice to be able to control the scale. So using this, this scale field was, was helpful for that. And when the, the merged polygon is, is all done, it looks something like this, right? So you have your rubbish rounds polygons and then your atlas polygons, which are a separate type. And they've got some of your information there about the, uh, for the atlas features that QGIS is going to use. It's time to bring it all together. Obviously, we've got QGIS you know, running an atlas. Um, but there's a bit of a problem, because if you have a look on this map, the Load one is that sort of orangey color. Load two is the green color, but they're the same color for all the rounds. So how do you know where the boundary is between the different rounds? Okay. So I was going to use the QGIS Atlas clipping functionality to resolve this. If you've never used it, you click on your map. You got a clipping settings button over here. Okay. You select clip to Atlas feature, and then you select which layers you want to clip. And now we end up with a map that looks like that. So now we've actually clipped the polygon to what it should be for that round. Okay. Um, you also notice that the atlas reference is our header. And the scale is obviously setting the, the scale of each individual map. But once the waste services reviewed these maps, they said, well, can you rotate some of these maps? So, sure a ladder atlas rotation field. And so that's what I did. And you see some of, you can't see them all, but some of them have got different values depending on how they should be rotated. That's, that's an example of one. All right, so now generating the atlas. Um, the one good thing about actually having an atlas reference field that was very verbose about like the, the, the at atlas polygons was when you generate your atlas from, from QGIS, you've got a, an output here if you're doing them individually. It'll normally just go output one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down to however many maps you got. But if you use that field, it comes out like that. So you don't need to rename anything, which is fantastic. It saves a lot of time. Now, I said it was Atlas driven, mostly. So the waste services came back to me after some review, and they said, well, that's nice, but uh, can you fit some of these maps on the same sheet of paper? And I thought, oh. <laughs> <coughs> Okay. 
I'll go away and think about that. So what I ended up doing was, well, this is an example of one. This is one of the recycling maps. So it was two maps showing the various bits of that, that pickup. Okay. Um, now, I, can't, I couldn't really shove this into the atlas. It just wasn't going to work. So what I ended up doing is, because I was filtering based on whether there was a landscape or a portrait, I would just throw in no atlas, and it just got filtered out. So it wasn't part of the atlas anymore. And I could just generate those handful of maps individually, which was, which was fine. It wasn't too much work. So are we at the end of the road? Uh, so there's 48 maps for the rubbish rounds generated, 46 for the recycling, zero geometromas. Yeah. <laughs> Still more work to do to clean up the data a little bit, um, but it's mostly there. And they're still being fine-tuned, so the waste services are still reviewing them, and you know they'll probably get back to them with some more curly curveballs to, to deal with. Um, but that's fine. That's all right. So closing thoughts. Uh, this started off as a fairly simple project, um, and I thought I'd be done in about a week. It, it wasn't. <laughs> um, and it really, I guess, highlighted to me the, the importance of having good data and, and good structure to your data. Um, also, the, the other thing is, because I'm on secondment, once I'm finished in that secondment, someone else will have to deal with this data. Um, and I think it's really important that you have as much in there as you can, as, as clear and legible as possible, so that someone else can pick it up later and do the edits. And uh, the QGIS Atlas is pretty awesome. And if you get the data right, you can make it that much better. So that is me.